live a different life now. I don't want to live. I want to live my sober life. I don't want to die. I'm on the verge of dying because I'm a vicious alcoholic. And I've been, I've been, um, wow. I've been, um, God, this is some interesting stuff. What the hell? I've been, um, I haven't drank, uh, took drugs in six days. And for me, that's a miracle. I've been lying to everybody else and think I was sober, but I'm not. This is my sixth day. I'm never going to use again. You held a press conference the other day, and boy, it got a lot of attention, Mike. Uh, it was raw. It was blunt. It was emotional. What was your state of mind going into that? I don't know. It was just, um, just being honest. Um, I'm a, I don't, people blew it out of proportion pretty much you know I just um, I felt um, I haven't drank for four and a half years and I took a drink and I started being I just started I mean I just started chugging them wing 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 and I got the um, and it's so ironic because I started feeling really guilty and I don't know why I feel good because really pretty much I really don't care about that situation because it's a personal situation and um I don't know. I just, I didn't feel good. Um, I just didn't feel good talking to these people, knowing that I, I took those shots the other day. What well, after four and a half years of sobriety, what was it that got you to take that drink? I don't know. Too much stuff coming at me. I'm doing my auto documentary, uh, um, the sports documentary I was doing with my friend Alan Freed for Fox Sports, and um, I did that. I was doing these. Five, everything started creeping up on me, hitting me. Boom! I started going to my old neighborhood and I started dealing with old old wounds that opened up and it was just overwhelming. I, I had no idea it would be that way. What you said at the press conference, you said you'd been lying to everyone about being sober. Did you... When I start drinking and I relapse, I think of dying. You know what I mean? I'm in a real dark mood. I think of dying. And I, I don't know. I, I don't want to be around no more. Sometimes I don't want to live when I'm in that state. Um, it's just really difficult to discuss. I just, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not experienced enough in um, in my recovery to really pinpoint it. It's just a really dark moment in my life when I start. You said you, you said you think about dying at that time. I went back and I read some interviews you've done over the years, and you know what I found, Mike? I found references on your part to suicide dating all the way back to the late 1980s. This is something that's come up from time to time in your life. How much do you think about it? Not that much, but I do think about it every now and then. Years, it's not like I'm gonna shoot myself today or something. It's, it's just sometimes um, if I get drunk, I'm just not the same guy. If I'm drinking, I'm just not the same guy. So I just need to just see my friends and see my, um, my sponsors and talk to them. And it's pretty personal. I just wish I didn't say it, but you know that's just how I feel. You, you right regret there. saying it now? No, no. I had to say that. I just had to say that because I um, had to be honest with myself. Because regardless of how much I love my wife, I love um, my children, and if I'm not honest, it'll never work. I don't care how much I love them; it's not going to work. I talked to someone who's very close to you. Quote: My whole life has been a waste. I've been a failure. What was the state of mind then? I don't know. I wanted to be um, a better fighter, I believe. And I just don't believe, I don't know, I just don't believe um, I was as good as I could have been. Another one, you said, I'll never be happy. I'll, I believe I'll die alone. I would want it that way. Well, that's just how an addict talks. You know, when addicts are high and addicts have earned their addiction, they, they talk like that. Everything's extreme. If I don't get my way, it's the world the end. Really? Yeah, pretty much, yeah. <laughs> you were a uh, half hour from the Strip. A couple of years ago, how much did your life sort of revolve around yeah, the Strip? Yeah, pretty much um, a great deal of my life revolved. I was just um, pretty much out there. It's believed to be having fun, and it's very um, accessible. So I just had a, a little vacation down there. It's interesting you say believed to be having fun. It, it might have seemed fun, but it wasn't really. 
No, I'm, you know, I'm just like anybody else. I'm a pleasure junkie. I wanted to have fun. I, this is what I believe is fun. I'm in Vegas and I can basically do what I want in Vegas. And um, that's just what I've done. That's just what you do when you're just, yes, um, I don't know, I guess you're lost trying to find yourself at that moment. You, you started you know, a cycle that you had to stop yourself. Yeah, I know. Um, I broke my cycle in my life. All my family members are obese and overweight. Um, my, my sister died of obesity with help with cocaine, too, of course. But, you know, this is just our lifestyle. This is how we lived. And I just learned a different lifestyle. I had tools. That's what drug um, rehab, all this stuff. And the people I encountered with, they gave me tools for certain stages of my life. Cuts gave me tools to, for a job to make money to be on top of my game just with tools mm -hmm. but I didn't have no social schools right so, right you know, none at all so I had to go through those stages things that I should have learned when I was three I had to learn when I was 30 mm -hmm. right could beat me. Something inside Tyson may have changed. So you end up going to rehab and you learn life skills, I understand. What sort of skills well, did you I learn? Just, um, I just met a great, um, I don't know, what can I call it? A conglomerate of just interesting, dynamic people that just um, had my interest at heart as a human being. You know, and it's just um, that rehab world is just like uh, some, like, um, how would I say, it? a utopic world. Everyone's right, what, happy. what is it like? It's like everyone's happy, everybody's positive, and we're going to win, and don't worry about it. And everybody has hard stories, but they're overcoming, and um, that's an awesome man. Um, some people think it's even like a cult, but that's just an awesome spirit, and just to be in the midst of when it's really um, properly performed, you know.